you're probably thinking, why is this guy showing me more of these nine inch Panasonic monitors? Well, this is better today because it's not a security monitor, not a minimum feature, no RGB accepting CRT. This is a fully fledged pro monitor. This is the model BT-S1015DA. Despite the 10 in the username or the model number, I class it as a nine inch monitor. That's the size, it fits in with all the other pro monitors being nine inch as well. Let's have a further look. Let's have a look at the controls on the front. Starting at the left hand most side, there is the push power button. Next to that is the line A, B or selector button. Line A takes care of composite and S video. Line B is your RGB and component signals. Scan is for under scan. It's normal. Now under scan. Aspect is aspect ratio, four by three or 16 by nine. There's 16 by nine. Back to four by three. Then we have the menu button and the monitor does have an on-screen menu. There is a rotary knob that moves in increments to select options within the menu. Following on more so, there is the contrast, brightness, phase, chroma, and volume knobs for adjustment. Finally, in the bottom right-hand corner is the model number imprinted on the bezel. As always, we must have a look around the back. I'll start by describing this area here. There's four vacant screw holes on the back, and that is for an add-on unit, the ET-SD06U. It's an SDI unit, serial digital interface. That's used in the broadcast industry. It's not of any real use to we gamers. This picture is an extract from the brochure for the monitor, which is available in the description below. Here you can see the unit has three cables coming out of it that connect into the RGB of the monitor. That's how the SDI picture is sent to the monitor. You can also see another fourth cable at the bottom that outputs six volts from the monitor into the SDI unit to power it. We're more interested in what sort of gaming inputs we can utilize. The left column side of connections is the input side and the right side is the output side. Line A accepts S-video composite and also accommodates audio, mono. Moving down line B again is for RGB and component, also with an audio and external sync is there for our RGBS, our typical SCART setup. Below is a remote connector, 3.5 millimeter headphone socket. That enables a cable to be plugged in and control widescreen or four by three either by shorting or opening whatever switch setup you have. Lastly, around here at the back, the AC in via IEC socket, accepts between 220 and 240 volts, not a multi-volty. Model number, and that's about it. That's about it, made in Japan. Good old Japan's come to save us with this one. Panasonic's gone for a recessed handle the indentation or the alcoves on the left side here. Sony rather goes for the strap style carry handle. Top down view. Side view, note, chassis number G19M. The tube is a Panasonic A22JWG098X. It is exactly the same as the ones featured in the two previous security monitors, also made in Malaysia. Come on, Panasonic, give us the made in Japan stuff. The menu system has a few options. For line A, it accepts S video and composite video. Believe it or not, you have to choose which one you want to display. Line B, RGB and component. You can choose whether your sync's internal or external. In the option menu, 
Notice that they're widened out. I'd say they're only accessible when an RGB source is detected being fed into the monitor. I'll turn the satin on. Now, there you go. They've turned green. H position still hasn't changed, however. Let me go back to input selection. Uh, we'll go back into RGB. That's it. Option. Mm. Now we can change horizontal position. Only in RGB is that possible at the moment. Get into the service menu. It's quite an unusual method. You need to hold down the scan button using the knob, rotate it clockwise three times or through three indentations, then left once, then right again three times, then left once. Ta-da! The service menu appears. If we go to picture or display reference, we can go in there and adjust H position, V position, H size and V size. The critical things that we need to adjust are now available. There's also some color adjustments that can be made there as well. Further options in the service menu include an aging mode. You can also set the country of designation. Let's see what it's got. Has it got many? Euro and USA, that's it. Imagine putting it on USA and it accepts only 110 volts. Bang. Well, that's not the case, obviously. When the service menu is triggered, look at this EEPROM. I won't go changing any EEPROM settings. When you're in service menu mode, it becomes the standard menu that appears when you press menu. Even if you turn the monitor off and then on, the service menu is still active. To get out of the service menu, it's similar to getting into it. And if I remember correctly, you hold scan, Rotate one increment right, one left, one right, one left. And there we go. We're back to the regular menu. Right, now we have an S-video signal being fed in from the pattern generator. That's in NTSC 4.43. No problems displaying that. NTSC-J, good. NTSC-M, good. PAL. Colour's looking a little different, but maybe it's tuned in a little bit differently from NTSC. PAL M is in black and white. That's not unusual. PAL N, off colour. That is not unusual. PAL 60, no problem. Yep, it's locked on to the 60 hertz, all good. And C cam, looking a little dull there. I'll go back to NTSC. You'll note that again there is a sloping sloping inwards there turning to the right on the left side it seems to be a common occurrence with all the three nine inch panasonics that i've filmed so far with a grayscale on screen the left hand side is quite hard to differentiate and see any grayness without turning the brightness and contrast up to compensate suggesting that the tube may have been worn quite a bit as it is in its life now. Certainly needs a bit of boosting to get that visibility up. Back onto the Sega Saturn running in RGB. This is an NTSC Sega Saturn. Check out the links below in the description. There should be links for the brochure, the instruction manual and the service manual for the Panasonic here. There's a curious option available in Vampire Saviour once you finish the game, if you hold the L and R buttons on option there and press start, it'll change some option choices. And at the bottom, you've got AV output, RGB, or S video. The only difference I've noticed is that on RGB, the character's energy bars are transparent. When it's on S video, the character's energy bars have a mesh effect to give the transparency. I don't know what other differences there might be. I'd be curious to know what the viewers think about that, whether they know the full account of what the difference is. 
Very unusual option. I hear that Street Fighter Zero Three also has a similar option in the game somewhere. To wrap this review up, I have to say this is clearly superior to those two previous Panasonic security monitors. Obviously having native component RGB and S-Video trumps the security monitors by far. The picture's nice. If you're more of a shadow mask person, then this could be the monitor for you rather than an aperture grill that Sony uses. I can only guess as to the reliability of the unit. There's more componentry made in Japan, therefore it may be better for that reason than the Panasonic security monitors. Please share, subscribe and like the video. See you in the next one. Might be a while until we get another 9-inch Panasonic.